During our last video, we covered some of the failure theories for brittle materials, specifically what we call fracture criteria. We talked about the maximum normal stress criterion, the coulomb more criterion, and the modified more criterion. In this video, we will look at some simple examples, beginning with the stress element and the properties of a brittle material, specifically the ultimate tensile strength and the ultimate compressive strength, and we will use the equations that we derived to calculate the factor of safety, including more circle diagrams and the stress envelopes diagrams. Remember that the stress elements shown here can be obtained by performing a simple combined loading analysis. For example, I can have a simple structure that is subjected to an external load. A combined loading analysis would allow me to look at the different stress elements that are candidates to present the highest principal stresses. We can see that the top element A would be subjected to a tensile normal stress due to abandon caused by P, and the stress element opposite to A, at the bottom of my cut, would be subjected to compression, and any stress element located on the neutral axis of that bending would be subjected to a shearing stress caused by the transverse shear created by P which is true of B or the stress element opposite to B. Additionally, any stress element on the surface of the structure at the point where the structure meets the wall would be subjected to torsion. This means that stress element A is subjected to tension and torsion, shearing stress, and stress element B is subjected to a shearing stress due to transfer shear and a shearing stress due to torsion. As long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter what your reference axes are to draw the stress element. For example, stress element A can be drawn with the normal stress from bending in the x-axis and therefore the shearing stress vector affecting the left side would be pointing downward. If I look at stress element B from the same perspective, I would see both shearing stresses going down affecting the left side of the stress element. When I calculate all the values for M, Y, I, J, T, C, Q, and lowercase t, I will end up with a stress element that looks like the examples that we're going to look at today. For our first example, we will have two negative normal stresses of minus 40 and minus 60 KSI and a positive shearing stress of 35 KSI. I know that the average stress would show me the center of the Mohr circle and that I can use the radius equation to find that the radius is 36.4 KSI. Therefore, my two principal stresses are minus 50 minus 36.4 and minus 50 plus 36.4. For all of these problems, I will assume a cast iron with an ultimate tensile strength of 30 KSI and an ultimate compressive strength of 110 KSI. The two principal stresses are all I need to calculate the factor of safety for this stress element. However, let's take a look at the Mohr circle and the stress envelopes. Since both of the stresses are negative, it doesn't matter what failure criterion I'm looking at, since the only differences will occur for quadrants 2 and 4, where one of the principal stresses is positive and the other one is negative. To calculate the factor of safety, I would divide the ultimate compressive strength over the highest absolute value of the two negative principal stresses. It's helpful to understand this graphically, and that is the main purpose of the stress envelope. The factor of safety would be the distance from the origin of the diagram to the property of the material passing through my principal stresses state, divided by the distance from the origin to the principal stresses state. For any case where both principal stresses are negative or positive, this ratio between the two hypotenuse values will be equal to the ratio of the sides, 110 and 86.4. Let's take a look at another example. Remember that I'm only showing enough vectors to understand the stress element, but don't forget that there are reaction stresses on the opposite side of the stress element. In this case, I have two positive normal stresses and a negative shearing stress, and we will keep using the same cast iron material. I know that the average of these stresses is 6, and that the radius for my Mohr circle yields 5 KSI. My lowest principal stress would be 6 minus 5, and the largest principal stress would be 6 plus 5. Since the two principal stresses are positive, the failure criterion that I use will not make a difference, because my principal stress's state is found in quadrant 1. The factor of safety in this case would be 30 divided by 11. However, once again, let's take a look at the Mohr circle and the stress envelope. Regardless of the failure criterion I'm using, the factor of safety is this distance 
over this distance, which is the same as this distance, 30, over this distance, 11. Now let's take a look at an example where one principal stress is positive and the other one is negative. Where sigma x is 18, sigma y minus 12, and tau xy 8. My average stress in this case is 3 ksi, and the radius of my Mohr circle is 17 ksi, which means that the lowest principal stress is 3 minus 17, and the maximum is 3 plus 17. And remember that sigma a can be the highest or sigma b can be the highest, regardless of the signs of the principal stresses for all the examples that we've shown so far. The resulting Mohr circle would be a circle with center 3 and radius 17. And depending on the failure criterion that I'm looking at, the stress envelope will look different and therefore my factor of safety will be different. If I don't draw or at least picture the stress envelope and instead decide to use the book and its 20 something equations for each one of the cases, I take the risk of making a huge mistake. Not to mention smaller mistakes like comparing a negative principal stress to a tensile strength and a positive principal stress to a compressive strength. The biggest problem in this case is using a long equation after misreading all the if cases for your principal stress values. Specifically, for the modified Mohr criterion, it would be easy to mistakenly take a negative and a positive principal stress to assume that this equation will be used. Since, after all, a negative and a positive principal stress does put me in the second or fourth quadrant of my stress envelope diagram. However, if I do use the stress envelope diagram, it's easy to notice that the factor of safety for the maximum normal stress and the modified Mohr is the same and equal to 1.5. For the factor of safety of the coulomb mohr criterion, we would in fact use the equation that we derived in our previous video. Knowing that since sigma a is negative, I will be comparing it to the ultimate compressive strength and sigma b will be compared to the ultimate tensile strength. And since sigma a is negative, I add a negative sign to obtain a positive fraction. With these values, we can see that the coulomb mohr criterion is the most conservative of the three. Since we didn't use the expression that we derived for the modified Mohr criterion, let's make some tweaks to the given stress element by changing the orientation of sigma x and sigma y, which will not change the radius of my Mohr circle, but will change its center to minus 3 instead of positive 3. My two new principal stresses will be minus 20 and plus 14. The new factor of safety for the maximum normal stress failure criterion would be equal to 30 over 14. For the coulomb mohr criterion, I will compare the positive principal stress sigma b to the ultimate tensile strength and the negative principal stress sigma a to the ultimate compressive strength. And finally, since the projection from the origin to the principal stresses state reaches the diagonal from the modified mohr envelope as opposed to the original unmodified example where it reached the horizontal line given by the ultimate tensile strength, I need to use the expression that we derived during our last video. Remember that this expression can be written with a sigma b here and a sigma a here, depending on what you chose to label a and b. In this case, since I chose to label the negative principal stress as a, I'm going to be comparing a to the ultimate compressive strength. By substituting the values, I find that my factor of safety is 1.919. Confirming that if we want to be very conservative, we use the coulomb mohr criterion, even though for most cases the modified Mohr criterion would suffice. In the next video, we will look at the yield criteria for ductile materials. We will look at the stress envelopes for each case, and we will derive some of the expressions that will help us calculate the factor of safety. Thanks for watching.